Okay. Here is the... Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do the unpack video. I just got home from uh, uh, just under a couple weeks of backpack hunting for doll sheep. Haven't made an unpack video for a while. You know, everybody online usually puts all their, uh, their goodies for a backpack hunt on the floor in the living room. They take a photo of it, whatever. Um, I don't find that useful at all. What is useful is when you unpack after the hunt and rate every single thing you brought, how much, how important it was, how much you used it, and whether or not you needed it, or whether or not you'll bring it again. So here we go. This backpack hasn't been unpacked yet. And this is what it looks like. Um, for anybody curious, I prefer the external frame pack every single time for every kind of hunting. And when I do get a big game animal, any kind, I'll take this full bag off my frame, strap the heavy meat onto the frame, and then I use pieces of string to uh, reattach my bag on top against the meat, against the frame. And that's what I do, and it works great for me. Okay, so let's unpack it. It's not gonna be in any special order because uh, obviously the end of the hunt is pretty messy. And um, you're just more concerned about getting out. So here we go. Uh, I actually brought bear spray, believe it or not. I wasn't shooting this hunt. I didn't bring a gun. I've never, like this is probably the first time in my life I threw in bear spray, but where we were hunting, there was an extremely high population of grizzly bears. And my luck, my one in a million encounter episodes in life, I figured, okay, well, I'll throw it in. Didn't need it. Um, okay, best water bottles available for any backpack or these disposables. These two were Whistler water bottles. They really sucked ass because I could not blow them up the original size very well, which I like to do. I mean, it worked, but that's the best I could do. And uh, that kind of sucked. There's another brand. I forget the name of it. You just get a convenience store. Find the one that blows up to the original size after crush it. And uh, I usually take two. I only need one. And uh, the reason I bring two is in case, you know, crinkling it pops a hole in it. But I've never had a hole pop in one of these bottles ever. And the longest I've done it for is three weeks. So one of these, a little bit larger possibly is fine. Um, what else have we got? The old trendy sexy Crocs, river crossers and camp slip-ons, disposable if you have to. Uh, used them a couple few times to cross the river. Um, this, is a, this is a windbreaker jacket. Um, it's all right, it's not that great for hiking in because you actually sweat quite a bit in it, just because it doesn't breathe over the well, but it's a good jacket to have on while glassing. Have that, I use that almost every day. 15 by 56 binoculars, very, very heavy. Um, but I prefer them, it cuts down on breaking up spot and scope by over 50% easily. So I really, really prefer these, and when I bring these, I'm usually the one to spot most of the game with these suckers. So, I eat up that extra weight. Well, there's a sock, I'll do the sock count in a minute. There's a gator, obviously no brainer. Rubber rain pants, okay. Let me get this over here more. Rubber rain pants. Under 50 bucks. What more do you need? Go ahead and try to tell me what that I need to spend two or three hundred dollars on a pair of freaking rain pants. Nobody does. Teach your own. Rubber rain jacket. Again, the number two only waterproof article you're ever gonna have. Rubber rain jacket. You want rain gear? Get rain gear. You wanna be waterproof? Get rain gear. Okay, I gotta retape it because the card ran out without me knowing it. And there's a bear about 100 yards to my left right now, <laughs> grazing over there. Anyway, okay, so this is what I call my survival lair. This stuff I bought in Alaska a while back. I'm not gonna promote their brand or their content. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna promote their products right now because, uh, let's face it, they're not promoting me. Uh, these plastic bags, these plastic bags, I stripped off the produce department in the grocery store just because they're light and they're cheap and easy. You can use one for whatever you want. Put a heart in it from a game animal, fish, uh, your lunch for the day, whatever, right? Uh, maybe get some wet socks you want to put in here to keep away from your, your stuff if you have to travel that day. Whatever, they're handy, obviously, very handy. There's probably 20 of them right here. They scrunch up to about the size of a golf ball, so. That's in the forever pack. Uh, thermo rest. I bought this in Whitehorse. Um, I'm over the thermo rest. It's only an inch. 
inch and a half thick. Now they have great mattresses for backpacking that blow up to like two, three inches thick. No brainer. So I had to buy this because they didn't have the ones they wanted in Whitehorse. Bad planning. That goes in the uh, never again pile. Um, okay, this is a wet dry bag. This wet dry bag goes on every single hunt, day hunt, backpack hunt, no matter what it is. Uh, even when I'm hunting from home because I when I hunt for the day I take this bag off my frame leave it in camp and I put this wet dry wet dry bag on it I'll have strings in it for tying quarters onto my frame. I'll have spare batteries blades lunch um, My headlamp in it. I'll have string again string um, Lighters, I think I probably had half a dozen lighters on this hunt as usual. They're stored all over the freaking place and I um, the wet dry bag is essential for me. Camera gear, lunch, license, blades, and I'll strap that onto my frame for the day. And then uh, I get anything. It's easy to put the game on the frame pack, tie this on afterwards. Very essential. And uh, this bag is all spare batteries for my camera equipment, which a lot of people don't bother bringing. It's very heavy. And that is obviously in the forever pile. Uh, let's go over some of my... Uh, let's go over my cooking equipment. I've got a, done a major change up. Um, I obviously, you know, people market things and come up with new things, including like this Jetboil system, which is going to be now as good as the Jetboil thing is in the garbage pile forever. Why? Because it's it has numerous parts and it has one use for boiling water. That's it. Obviously, you can drink a coffee out of it, but that's it. You can't cook out of it, you can't hold it over a fire. It's expensive, and um, if you do try to cook food in this, if you can cook food one day in it, um, it's, it, it basically concretes onto the damn thing, um, and it's not economically or, it's just not a wise option for me anymore. I've been at this gig too long to know what is um, useful for real and what really isn't, and what's more versatile. That isn't, it's off the team forever. What I do have is I have my, it's just from a regular backpack camp stove cook set. It's got a handle on it. This is obviously beat up, but it still does what it's supposed to do. It packs away nicely. I could put my fuel in it, my stove in it. I put in a couple instant coffees in it, in my coffee mug, and that goes in my wet dry bag for the day. So I can have a coffee on the mountain, lipped it, I can have a, a cup of uh, soup in it during the day. It cooks, it heats up the water for my meals. I can eat and cook oatmeal in it and wash it all like nothing, it's a no stick pot. I can hold it over a fire, okay? It's very small. This is very small, the stove. This stove is very, very small. It folds into a holder. And I can also double this up as a fire starter, put it on its side. Uh, fuel wise, I will use a, I bring a large canister and this little small one. The small one is for me for the day, so I can have maybe a cup of coffee or soup on the mountain during the day. And the other larger size one is, uh, it's in here somewhere, is great for the whole entire hunt if I need be. It'll, it'll be enough to boil water for my meals for a full 10, 12, 14 day hunt in uh, sparingly. But I like to throw this in so I can have a cup of coffee or soup during the day on the mountain. Now, my coffee mug, plastic, lightweight. Oh, and here's my leftover, a few leftover meals. Another camera, optional obviously. I had three GoPros, useless for hunting. GoPro is absolutely useless useless for hunting for me. Another camera. I had ridiculous amounts of weight for camera gear. More batteries. A metal spoon. I bring a metal spoon. Why? Because you can't break it, you can't melt it. That's why I bring a metal spoon. That's all I need. There's uh, the other gator. Tent. Obviously, forever pile. Pegs. Gator. Still tarp. Still tarp. I bring every time, no matter what, on a backpack hunt because it can be double up as a shelter or sit on it or line the bottom of your tent if you pop a hole in it by accident. Uh, you can set it up on a rainy day to sit outside to keep you out of the weather while you're going insane waiting for weather to, to uh, uh, blow over instead of just hanging inside your tent going batshit crazy. That's in the forever pile for sure. So I'll put my cooking stuff in the forever pile. This is the only way to go. I don't give a shit what anybody says. This is the only way to go.
this setup right here. It's cheap, it's easy, it's very versatile. It does more than just boil water. Um, okay, garbage bag of clothes. It's gonna be yummy. Again, this is the first time I've unpacked since I went this hunt. I always keep everything separated by garbage bags. Okay, what do we got? Nothing's cotton in my clothing. Let's see what that's straight away right now. So here's a one t-shirt. One merino wool long john top. Forever pile. Uh, my hunting pants that I've had for numerous years, all times of the year, are very thin, tear resistant material. I bought it at a regular workwear world in British Columbia. 35 bucks, I think Columbia makes them. These are the best frickin' hunting pants I've ever owned. $35, look at them. I've shot, these, these things I've seen so many mountain sheep drop, it's stupid. Uh, as well, other numerous game. You get them wet, they are dry in minutes. And legs aren't the issue, it's your feet, your hands, and your head. That's what you have to keep warm and take care of. Nobody complains about losing their legs to cold, <laughs> okay? If your legs are too cold to handle it, you've already lost your feet, your hands, and your head way, way, way before your legs are gonna start complaining. Another pullover, I've had this in numerous hunt videos. Um, I did definitely wore this a few times. It's an option, I'll throw out the forever pile. One pair of polar fleece pants. Uh, I wore these a few times. It's not, not mandatory, but I bring them. Um, this is a windbreaker shell I bought, one of those things from Cabela's. The scrunch is up into nothing. And um, did I wear this once? Nope, that's in the out pile. There's one pair of heavy socks. Ooh. <laughs> Two pairs, three pairs of socks. What I always do is I always, always, always double up on my socks. No matter what, I double up on socks. It doesn't matter what time of year. And that makes my boots cinch up to me nicely. So I'll have one pair of heavy sock and wear one pair of thin socks at the same time. Uh, so I got one, two, one, two, three, three pairs of heavy socks. I got one pair of mediocre weight socks. I'll put these on in my sleeping bag or maybe in camp in my, in my Crocs. <laughs> so there's one, two, three, four pairs of socks. One more t-shirt, which makes three. Definitely gonna bring that. Another pair of thin socks. One, two pairs of regular underwear. Uh, that's in the forever pile for sure. Four pairs of socks. I go heavy on the socks, I don't give a shit. I, I'll bring, I'll, I have at least half a dozen pairs of socks. And if you can't take it anymore, you can burn them after. One pair of merino wool long john bottoms. They're in the forever pile. And that is my clothing. That's it. Um, oh, here's one more t-shirt. Here's what, three t-shirts? And the rest of my socks. Get back to the cooking. Here is the uh, one fuel canister that I bring. This will do me for two weeks by myself, just being conservative on the fuel, boiling, boiling out my meals in the morning and in the evening. But I bring this little guy, and this is my cheap thing, I call it. It's an extra weight. I don't give a shit about the weight, really. And I use this for coffee, again, coffee and soup in the afternoon if I want. Fire starter. Um, what else? That's it. Backpack cover. Another lighter. I got lighters hidden in every single compartment and everything I have. Uh, you, these will save your ass. It's a buck, <laughs> whatever. It's nothing fancy for a fire starter. This is my sleeping bag. My sleeping bag is in a wet dry bag I purchased and it's lined with a plastic garbage bag. And obviously this takes an absolute beating being on the outside of my pack. There's no way this thing's waterproof. But uh, the plastic bag makes it waterproof and it also makes the sleeping bag stuff into it fast and easy and smooth. Otherwise, if I didn't use a garbage bag to stuff it in that wet dry bag, it's a, it's a real grunt and it's piss off. So, that's it. That is all of my gear that I need for two weeks. And, uh, what does it weigh? I don't know. You know what? I'm not even... This is, the way I, this is the way I see it when it comes to weighing your stuff. I've seen lots of people try to get stuff down to the ounce and save an ounce here. And, oh my God, I can save a couple, a couple ounces there and I'm so uber light. Which is fine, teach your own. Me? I never remember the last time I, I weighed my shit. Because you know what? If you have it in you to complain or whine about a, a couple extra pounds or a few extra, extra ounces, I want to see the look on your face when you throw a hundred and something pounds of, of game meat on your back. <laughs> right? I mean, if you're tough enough to go on a backpack hunt for any big game animal, especially mountain goat or sheep, or you're going to be packing that whole freaking thing back on your back with all of your gear, 
Um, you're probably not going to be the type to whine and cry and snivel about a few extra ounces, you know? That's just my way of thinking. Maybe I'm an old school uh, prick, but whatever. It is what it is. Now, my meals. What do we eat during the day? I eat, um, I wake up, I'll force down two packs of oatmeal. I can't stand oatmeal, but I'll eat it. It's all fuel. I don't give a shit. So I'll have two packs of this in the morning. And then I will have my bare minimum, which I found works for me. I'll have, say, I don't know, two clip bars. Do I count the calories? No, I just don't. I just eat this shit. I'll have two of those. I might throw in a additional little regular granola bar off the shelf, so that's three bars. And I'll put in a cup, two extra, two, uh, two instant coffees for me for the day after I have it in the morning, because I like coffee. Uh, what's this? A cup of soup? I'll throw in uh, maybe a cup of soup a day for the hell of it. It's not essential, but that's that's what I have. Uh, electrolyte replacement tablets. I have those in my water. And a teeny tiny bar of soap to get all the blood off of you after you've uh, harvested your animal. So, I think that's basically it. It's about all I can share. That's all I have. My toque. Headlamp, of course. String. I already went through that. Oh, there's another coffee. <clears throat> this is a... A roll of twines. This is used for commercial fishing nets. The pound test on this is ridiculous. This could hang moose quarters easily. This is a very, very handy type of string to have in your backpack. That's it. It's simple. It's simple. It's, it's economically smart. It's functional. There's no overkill. There's zero trendy shit in my stuff. And uh, I might not look like the coolest cat on the mountain, but I come home again. And that's what counts. And I'm comfortable and I survive and I stay dry and I save money, and uh, it's just common sense. It's practical, and it's the way I do it, and it works for me, and I've been doing it a long time. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, spare batteries for your headlamps, no-brainer. One thing that was, it's for me, this particular hunt, like that camera filming right now is a full-size Canon <clears throat> camera with a 1-400 to telephoto lens on it. There's a major heavy tripod on it. My camera gear alone, I think this trip was well over... It's probably around 12 pounds. That's getting up there for a little additional weight. Um, I did, at the airport, weigh my backpack, which had almost everything except my camera gear. And it was around 56 pounds at the airport anyway. And uh, that was just minus, um, I don't know, nine days worth of food. There you go. That's unpacking. So my forever pile is pretty good um, since I've been, you know, moving along. Oh, nail clippers. I forgot nail clippers on this hunt just about drove me freaking batty. So the only thing that I'm tossing, I talked previously tossed is the jet ball system. It's out forever. You'd never be able to talk me back into it ever. That windbreaker shells off the team. I got my rain gear. That's it. I got two knives. And uh, there you go. That is what I bring. And that is the only thing I would change up for a longer distance hunt would be more food. That's it. The clothing would stay the same no matter what the temperature. I have the warm, my shit's warm enough and it's also light enough for warmer days. Obviously, I'm not a trendy product pusher. I never will be. And I'm here to help you guys with common sense, with real true um, experience and knowledge to share with you guys. That's what I'm about. I'm telling you guys how to do this practically and save money and be efficient. And that's all I've got to offer you guys from years of experience. And, uh, this works for me. This is all I need. This is it. Good luck out there.